What's up, everybody? This is Matt from America Patriot News, and right next to me is Romeo. Hello. And today I'm going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about uh, a, a situation that happened at the uh, Blaze uh, Summit, where uh, well, Nikki Haley she went on stage with uh, Tucker Carlson. She had several mistakes, and this is a really big mistake. And he asked her about the 81 million votes that. Uh, Biden supposedly got. And let's just say at the end of it, she she admits she believes Biden won. And in the second video I have, Terry Lake, she was there as well. She has a different opinion on this, and we can all guess what that opinion is. But first, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, Nikki Haley and what happened there. Hey, Tucker has been an absolute wrecking ball. <laughs> One million votes. 15 million more than Barack Obama. Twice the population of New York City more than Barack Obama. What do you think of that? In terms of Biden? Yeah. 81 million votes. They are saying that Joe Biden got 81 million votes. And my question is, do you accept that? Now, you can tell by her reaction there. She doesn't want to answer that question. She nope. doesn't like the question. Nope. This Just is her body nightmare. Language. Yeah, the body it's language. Her, there. It's her nightmare. She doesn't have a good answer for this. Yeah. And second, how do you think he did that? I mean, all I care about is changing that. Like, I right. don't, we can't afford a President Kamala Harris. I will say that over and over. Amen. And we have to do everything we can to make sure that that happens. But as a mechanical question, it's not a trick question. It's just like the mechanics of it, something you're thinking about since you're running. I don't think anyone would say Joe Biden was a great candidate. No. Didn't campaign. He didn't campaign at all. He was not a figure who commanded respect among Democrats. They made fun of him. I'm not attacking the guy, but that's true. Right. Nobody in Washington said, I want my kid to grow up to be Joe Biden. <laughs> and yet, at the end, he's got 81 million votes. 15 million more than Barack Obama, who, whatever you think of him, was a very talented politician and, I think, smart. So, like, how did he do that? And what can we learn from that? Well, I, what you can learn from it is what we did in South Carolina. I said in South Carolina, if you've got to show picture ID to buy Sudafed, if you've got to show picture ID to get on a plane, you should have to show picture ID to protect the integrity Amen. of the election process. So, you know, and we have to make sure election integrity is something we don't ever stop. You have to continue over and over. We've had some states who've done some great things and they've put voter ID in place and that's been great. We still have some other states who haven't done anything and we need to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to. I mean, we saw during COVID a lot of people, a lot of um, secretaries of state changed rules without getting state legislative support. We saw a lot of that happening. We saw a lot of mail out balloting. We've got to make sure we continue to fight to make sure we have integrity in the election process. Because I saw at the United Nations, you never, when you have your people lose faith in an election system, that's the first crack of a, of a country falling apart. We have to keep fighting for this. We have to make sure we get it done. Yes. So when I asked about the 81 million votes, you immediately said things I think I, I agree with about election integrity. Yeah. So are you suggesting that that last election, it sounds like you're saying you don't think it was on the level. Are you talking about the presidential election? That's correct, the presidential Yeah, election. no, I mean, I think we all know that there were irregularities in there and that there were some issues that happened. We know that there was mail-out balloting that shouldn't have happened. I, do I think that changed the results of the election? No, I mean, I think President Biden ended up winning the election. But I think at the end of the day, it showed we've got a lot of work to do in terms of election integrity. So you bold face lie well everything she said before that was leading to a completely different answer than she just gave I, well in my opinion uh what uh the answer she gave and what she said in between what she said in between was just to suffice people that's all it was to do right to pacify them is that's what you're saying yes yeah, the, the problem is that she, if you could get her alone and she had to tell the troop, truth, like she's got Wonder Woman's magical lasso around her leg, nobody believes Biden got 81 million votes. Yeah. I mean, like, if you were going to pay even the staunchest of liberals, if you were going to pay them millions of dollars to get the question right, and the question was, was there, was there, fraud that led what that was outcome determinative 
they're going to get the answer. Even the left is going to get the answer correct to win money. That's well, the way I'd put it. Well, the fact is, the idea that she's saying the problem is that these sta uh, states don't have uh, pitch, uh, p ID voting or uh, allow uh, absentee voting or melon balloting. And, but the thing is, even though that's an issue, it didn't change the outcome. Right. It's crazy. It's contradictory. She yeah. contradicted herself throughout the whole thing. The mail-in balloting numbers were, were, let me use a word, gargantuan. The amount of people that sent in mail-in ballots and signature ver verification wasn't done in many, many places, most most of the, the the swing states in question, Wisconsin didn't verify signatures. So the Carter Baker Commission, which is the premier in US and world history, deep dive into elections, okay? They came to the conclusion that mail-in balloting is the number one source of fraud in elections mail-in balloting and on the other side of that um we're just going to allow why, matt why are we having mail-in balloting this next time there's no reason for it yeah, there's no reason nobody's, nobody's sick why is it still allowed when we admit when both parties admit that mail-in balloting is the number one source of fraud well why would we want a huge source of fraud involved in our elections. Why would well, we want it? You don't want it still allowed. You don't want it still allowed. So Racism. the Democrats can nope. win. Racism. That's why it's still allowed. Oh. Anyway, uh, oh. yeah, you, you got to remember everything leads to that. Now, now the thing well, is, all right. Uh, yeah. Now the thing is, uh, in this next video, I'm going to show you Carrie Lake. She has a different opinion on this, and she also says. It looks like to me she's running in 2012 instead of 2024. So go ahead and check that out. Like we were seeing somebody who was running a, a 2012 race. That's gotcha. yes. And yeah. I'm looking at her. When he came out and said what he said about 81 million votes, yeah. I was waiting for her to be more honest. I mean, let's. How would you have answered that? Well, I mean, I have a song, you know, right now. Right now. <laughs> we know 81 million votes didn't happen. And they've asked us to to take our intelligence and check it. No, so wait. So but believe this. So how would I, I want you to I want you to answer that if you were the candidate and I was Tucker and I said to you, eighty one million. Well, what you, happened? Know, you know how I'm going to answer it. I'm going to say, of course, it didn't happen. Joe Biden didn't get anything close to that. President Trump won more votes than any sitting president in history. And they rigged this election to put Joe Biden in the White House. Period. You don't, Glenn, you don't lose 17 out of 18 bellwethers and win the most votes in the history Correct. of our country. You just Correct. don't do it. Correct. You don't only win 16% of counties and win the most votes of anybody. Correct. So then let me ask you again, if you were the candidate. So what are we doing here? What, what is, how do we fix this? Because all of this doesn't matter if... We can't count on the vote being accurate. Well, if you want me to answer honestly, we could have fixed that on January Arrest 6th. Arrest Katie Hobbs would be we my answer. We could have fixed that on January 6th when there were major problems and a million people were standing there protesting and saying, help us, Congress, give us relief, send these questionable numbers back to our states. Please let us look through this. And we didn't do the right thing. Our nation failed that day. And that's why I'm fighting. And that's why our election, our victory was stolen from us. And sadly, I think that many of the people who are showing up and are going to be talking to Tucker don't want to talk about election corruption. But I will tell you, I've spoken to many people when I was standing out here who are attendees here. Mm -hmm. And they're telling me, thank you for fighting. We've got to sort these elections out. It is out. either the first, second, or third question that I've been asked by almost everybody I've talked to here. And that is, does any of this matter anyway? Are we going to have a secure election? And, you know, I was just talking to uh, one of the other candidates, and I said, you know, one question that they won't answer in Congress is, what does that executive order do? One of the first ones Biden put in was a government-wide uh, effort to uh, register people to vote. Mm -hmm. And Congress 
will cannot get an answer what are you doing what does that mean they have been fighting from the very beginning just saying we're not trying to stop you we want to know what each agency is doing and it won't they won't reply hmm. well how, how are we gonna I mean what do we have if we don't have full faith and credit we have no faith in our elections. The, the real people out there don't have faith in our elections. 80% of Republicans have no faith in our elections. They think they're fraught with fraud. 61% of independents and 30% of Democrats say there's fraud in our election. And this is a taboo subject. The government is, is currently trying to censor people who talk about the election. You know where I stand. I have done a lot of research. President Trump won in 2020, and nobody wants to talk about that. They want to just act like everything's fine. And now we have Joe Biden sitting in the White House. He was behind the Nord Stream explosion. He is behind pushing war. He is behind a dismal economy. He's behind so, censorship, so and we're sitting here going, we have to be polite, and we can't really talk about this. What, what a great point. Because you know what? I'm done being polite. Now, uh, later on, when Nikki Haley was up there and uh, she was talking to Tucker, they get into the machines. And she said something I agree with, and I'm pretty sure everybody else would agree with, get rid of the machines and just go to paper ballots. And I, I'm completely 100% for that. And uh, she's also she also mentioned something about uh, the idea of going to maybe uh, less days voting. There's no need to have months of voting. No need for it. You know, a week should be max, really, in my opinion. Most people want one day. The only reason I'm saying a week is because I worked in the oil field. I work construction. And a lot of times, where uh, if you're out and you're out on the uh, out on that uh, construction site or on, on a uh, uh, an oil platform, you don't get a chance to go home because you have to stay there and work. The whole time we we had uh, what we called a jack house uh, where we actually slept at, and we stayed there. We didn't come home until a week or two weeks, depending on how the rotation works. Sure. So, so the thing is, the only way we'd get a chance to vote is if we were home. So that extra that week, we we would find a way to get, actually get to vote. I don't even think you have to change voting. I think you just need to adopt. A, regu or a regulation that allows people with very specific jobs that make it hard for them to vote, to vote. You need to accommodate people. But as far as having months of mail-in balloting, no, it, it's cheating by its very nature. That's well, that, what it is. You that's, don't, why that's why I'm saying the one week would work. Yeah. And I like the idea of paper ballots. I absolutely don't want machines anywhere near my ballot. You know, now, paper worked for the first 200 years of this republic. I, and and Matt, you know, we even though we used old school paper, you know, we used to get the results by 10 p.m. with paper. And it was like 11, 12. But now we're using <laughs> computers and everything's digitized and it takes two three four weeks no i call bullshit on that well i think it's a matter of time before states try to implement you can vote online i think that's a matter of time something like that happens and yeah, uh, i guess be, support anything like that, that well my guess would be california would be the first state to do something like that yeah yeah oh you're right yeah. california or new york city but I think New York City would resist it, and it would be, you know, how California is the trial state for all yeah. kinds of kooky ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree at all, man. I think you're right on point. Yeah. It would be either California or, or Washington State or Oregon. I mean, all three of those states are kooky. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, Oregon's got this uh, idea. Oh, we'll just legalize all drugs. How well is that going? <laughs> yeah, how's that working out for you? Yeah. Oh, everybody thinks the porta potty is the sidewalk. Yeah, but uh, when it came to Carrie Lake, what she was saying, I mean, she's right on point. She's right about everything she's saying. But I think we also need to emphasize there's a lot of people that actually believe the same thing that Nikki Haley was saying. And the thing is, when you when you talk to them, they're going to believe it no matter what. They're, I mean, that's just how they are. But 
you can actually change their mind on interference when it comes to when you go like this and you talk to them about what happened with the uh, Russian uh, disinforma uh, the disinformation, supposedly uh, that the Hunter, Hunter Biden laptop was. You know, supposedly it was Russian disinformation. Or when it comes to uh, uh, the 50 Intel chiefs signing a letter saying it was Russian right, disinformation. Right. And didn't you have the Russia gate crap that they did for five years? That was election interference and, and so on and so forth. Now you're having it happening this year with all the indictments. The fact is, majority of people are seeing what that really is. That's election interference. Uh, interference. Not only that, it's a rigging of the election because you're making uh, because people are already voting after certain a uh, certain time because they believe what they saw, and then later on they found out it wasn't true. Yeah, man, you're right on point, and that's the situation that we're currently in. Uh, Mail-in voting. I cannot believe no one's fighting against this right now. Absolutely no reason to allow mail-in balloting anywhere in the United States. Absolutely no reason to use machines, paper ballots. These things are self-evident. The American people see what's going on. We used to get the results by 10 or 11 p.m., every election cycle now we wait weeks and it's like why are we waiting oh so you can figure out how many votes you need to win yeah come on now now one thing i'll say is a lot of the uh, absentee uh, voting that's happening in certain states like wisconsin michigan and in pennsylvania the reason it's happening there is because the fact is it's republicans to institute it and what really? I'm saying is, yeah, they the instituted did this in Wisconsin. Yes, they voted for it in the in the uh, legislature. And so, Robin the, uh, Voss, hey, Robin Voss has been an absolute effing nightmare for Wisconsin. Well, he wouldn't let uh, the judge's investigation do its job. Hey, the guy is a rhino piece of garbage. Well, anyway, and they also did the same thing in Michigan and Pennsylvania. So the fact is, not only are the Democrats are an issue, so are the Republicans. You know, that's a fact. And until we actually do something when it comes to the non-Republicans uh, uh, or rhinos or non-conservatives that are in the party, that you're going to keep on having issues like this where you're going to have Republicans and Democrats working together to make sure you get these uh, uh, candidates that are uh, that are not pro-American, like uh, Donald Trump, Vivek Ramaswamy, and so on and so forth. It's like treatment talk. If you do what you always did, you're going to get what you always got. Yep. Like straight out of AA. That's what our politicians need. Yep. Some kind of political AA. I mean, there's a reason they're doing it, and they're doing it because of their pocketbooks, in my opinion. They're, they're yeah. get, uh, you know, that's the main reason they're doing it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, uh, they're getting paid by the, uh, uh, you would say deep state. Some people would say the military industrial complex. It doesn't matter. It's all the same freaking thing. They're getting yeah. paid to vote a certain way. That's right, and it's the big. That is about the biggest problem the American, our American Republic has, is that. People are allowed to donate vast sums of money to candidates in a quid pro quo for their vote on a specific issue. Well, what happens when the candidate has pretty much sold all of his votes? That That's what we're running into. Yep. These guys are literally taking contributions in exchange for their vote. And... Right. It was our system was never meant to run like that. I think we need to take the money out of DC, and you know what? All the rats will go with it. Yeah. Now, uh, if you want to look at the history of when this really started happening, where money started going in there, it was actually over a hundred years ago. Yeah. You know, you know when it really started happening with Carnegie and and uh, Rockefellers and and J.P. Morgan, J.P. Morgan, so on and so forth. Yeah, these people bought elections back then, and that's it. Didn't care what party it was, Republican or Democrat. And now it seems that it's been placed only on one party at this point. They want to they want to buy these elections for the Democrats. 
Yeah, the chickens have come home to roost, to quote Barack Obama's minister or pastor. Yeah. Well, guys, we're going to have to end it. We hope you enjoyed. Please hit that like button and also comment. It helps push the video. And please share this out. That helps us as well. We really appreciate it. Romeo, you got the last word. Have a wonderful evening, guys. And um, please share the content out. We will see you tomorrow.